Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. Happy Friday to all of you guys. We've got a video here where Nick Vial offers some advice to Katie Thurston. And let me tell you something. Pretty solid advice. Wondering if you and I can actually use this advice as well. Sort of how like we feel entitled as an audience to know things about uh, the contestants on the show. But in social media in general. And he says, you don't owe them anything to Katie Thurston. And we see this as uh, sort of a lesson people learn uh, throughout their time on the show. Just very quickly, we look at Cassidy, right, one of the first villains of the season. She had to address uh, the feedback she was receiving on Reddit because of the way she re she basically phrased her apology. She says, uh, you know, mistakes were made, and then she was called out for not owning up to the mistakes, and then she had to go into some sort of, uh, you know, uh, literal description of saying, like, look, I made the mistakes. I'm apologizing. Take it for you know what it's worth and then of course people go wow she's just trying to campaign again on bachelor in paradise and here's what we have to understand is that the internet can be a dark place i've been talking about this a lot lately on my channel uh just with regards to comments i receive personally but nick really hits the nail on the head i don't want to do too much uh explaining it but just have a listen and maybe it can help us as consumers uh when it comes to how we deal with other people's uh content and the the the, the way we feel ownership and entitlement to them like for me example we've got fifty one thousand subscribers we have 500 or 600 more subscribers than nick vial but who's counting i'm kidding nick come on catch up let's go what are you doing what do you got let's go um and he's got millions obviously on on instagram and it might be futile for him to even fight the hate uh but for me i like to expose it at least i like to expose when people feel entitled to my content or my time i say this all the time uh i got a dm from someone and um, someone I had never met before, but they were a stand-up comedian, and I saw them at a show. They sent me a DM asking to be on my program, and I didn't respond to it, and because I didn't know what to tell them. It, the, I, I'm busy, uh, you know what I mean? I don't know people th my time. Um, and the guy goes, "Cool." After I didn't respond, he goes, "Cool." Uh, no, or like what? He was a passive aggressive, and in my eyes, I was like, "Man, now I'm gonna have to see this guy knowing that there's like weird blood because I didn't." give him what he felt entitled to. And this happens all the time. I may, I've probably been on the other the other side of things where I've developed a anger towards someone for not being invited onto their podcast or for not getting a phone call back. And that's just the ego, right? But it's interesting uh, discussion to have. So we'll talk about it. Do me a favor. Follow me on Instagram at Dean Neils if you enjoyed my content and patreon.com slash Dave Neal for extra weekly bonus content. I will be going live on a Patreon early afternoon today for about at least an hour or so. So if you want to uh, talk to me there, we're going to get real personal. We've been talking a lot about mental health, which is fine on my end. It's fine. But I think it's fine because we're addressing these things. If you just let problems just get swept under the rug, you know, whatever it is in life, whatever speed bump you hit, it's just gonna, it's just all gonna kind of emerge at the worst possible time. So change the oil in your car and be, uh, be emotionally open to understand that we're all flawed and then we can work on ourselves because I think the inner, the inner child within us wants to experience joy. Let's deburden. Let's uh, just sort of watch what Nick and his producer have to say, which by the way, she's very lovely. I love this producer. Very lovely energy. We do have, so Katie posted an Instagram, um, talking a lot about her experience with social media and more specifically the ways that it hasn't been healthy for her mental health and how she's been trying to set boundaries. One thing that she mentioned was that she has a limit on her screen time that only John, her current boyfriend, knows the password to. Um, what do we think about that? It's also was followed up by uh, Katie additionally posted a video on TikTok talking about her inverted nipple and the way that we should normalize our bodies and explaining uh, her experience with said inverted nipples <laughs> tea I'm piping all, hot i'm all for, <laughs> for like limiting screen time i think i think social media is i mean i love it and i hate it so much yeah, you know a, so i support that we have to to manage that it's i think the juxtaposition of her two posts is an interesting juxtaposition yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know yes social media for all of us is challenging and it's you get this audience and you don't know what to do with it uh initially dismissive but that's what we get we kind of get like a little pushback and then we kind of get deeper right so it is you know nick but nick has been in a place where none of us have uh just a few dozen people have been in the shoes that he's in where he's been a lead on the show he's been the villain on a show he's been successful on the show he's been on all these different places at some point you like like Victoria Larson had said on Katie's comments, at some point, 
a part of you may die. The part of you that cares what other people think may die. Maybe that's the price you pay for monetizing your content is that a piece of you dies and then you move on and you no longer care. Whereas Katie's still grappling with that. Natalie, <clears throat> since Natalie and I have started dating, she has, you know, she has more followers now than she did when we didn't start dating. And, and that happened rather rapidly. And what, you know, one thing I love about her is among many things is I honestly don't really notice a difference between her social media use between now and when we first started hanging out, which it wouldn't be bad if she yeah, did more, herself. but it's just, she's very like, she's good at managing. And like that, compartmentalizing. Yes. You know, she's on it more. She, you know, she, she does it. Sure. Mm -hmm. And she started doing like some of these Q and A's or whatever. Mm -hmm. And she's been asked to do a couple podcasts and once in a while she'll, she'll be like, Oh, do you think I should share this or that? And all, I only thing I ever remind her, is is that when you have an audience and i feel it too you sometimes feel like this responsibility to to share or give them what they want so to speak to answer their questions mm -hmm. and i always remind her you don't have to yeah, do you that don't, you don't owe them. you don't owe them anything yeah. and just whatever you share just know that you are giving a bunch of strangers access to you and you don't get to control how they use yeah. that, right? Now, I agree with him full, like full stop right here. It's it's a little futile though, because it's saying like by sharing you, by being authentic, you're, you're asking for it. And I know that's not what he's saying, but that's kind of what it is. It's like, well, you put yourself out there. That's the price you have to pay. And it's like, well, why does that exist? Is, is that the price we have to pay? Because that's what the algorithm says, because... You're not just sharing, you're letting other people comment. And is that why social media is so successful? Because it's the first way that we link together a fan base or hater base directly with the actual creator. And that might be the price you pay for it. Very futile though, knowing I don't have an answer for it. Right, and so no matter what you say, no Nothing matter what. prepared for. You, yes, mm -hmm. it's, there's always waves, right? The first wave is met with like, oh, you're so like amazing, I love you, whatever mm -hmm. that, whatever that praise is immediately followed by the second or third wave is going to be when it gets out into the outside of your audience mm -hmm. you know when your your critics mm -hmm. you know start seeing yes. it and they start sharing it with other people and someone comes from another page can you believe what this person posted or ha ha right. ha and then people will have those opinions and this is so funny because this is exactly where i was this week where the success of getting out of your niche mine being a couple thousand people the success you receive there is being introduced to a bubble that's not always going to get you which is what you see with comedians when they hit the mainstream they go dude this guy's weird what is weird to one person is another person's best friend okay and that's where we're at i have people where i get messages from you guys saying oh my gosh i was bedridden i had surgery on this or i needed to do that or i was snowed in or you know we're on lockdown so many different stories uh new year's eve we spent five hours together it was amazing it would have been a bad night you helped me get through a bad day i was doing the dishes i did this i, I hear the story all the time. It's almost like you guys know me, big Tom Brady fan, fan right? If he has 75,000 people in a stadium and 73,000 are cheering at the top of their lungs and 2,000 are booing him, all he does is hear 75,000. But imagine if Tom Brady had 73,000 people cheering for him and 2,000 people waiting outside the locker room yelling at him. When he came out, all he would do is hear his haters. And somehow in social media, the haters are pushed to the top. I think the algorithm should somehow somehow um and again i'm not saying create an echo chamber but really i don't and i don't know how to do this but i really feel like uh as i, th I think as i speak here the algorithm should somehow give give a, a higher weight to the people that are issuing positivity you know these algorithms they're scanning what i'm saying right now they're they're dictating it for their search engine optimization it's so complicated why can't the algorithm take hate that's not just or hate that's not done with a with a sensitivity and shuffle it to the back of the line but instead it goes oh people are gonna uh, disagree with this it's gonna add to the commenting and you know it just adds fuel to the that fire and affect you so it's just right. I'm all, I, like I, I repeat myself all the time anytime I mean, the few times she asked me, I just say the same thing. You don't have to do it. Just, just know that. You know. I always use that. What's that? Uh, what's that? Like, what's that woman's name? Where it's like, if it doesn't give you joy. Oh, Marie Kondo. Yeah, that's like my yeah. social media rules. Like, does this post <laughs> give me joy? Like, do I do I want to share this with people? Totally. That's an you interesting. Know? That's a great point. And that's but a post may give you joy 
but then someone else, like I, like I get joy speaking about human rights issues. I get joy talking about things that there's always going to be somebody that's got a differencing of opinion, a contrarian, if you will. Something we, people in Bachelor Nation have all made the mistake. Uh, Amanda and Ali work with me. And it, like most of the stuff we post and do on like TikTok is fun. But every once in a while, it's just like, is this, is this worth it? Like, yeah. do we know how this is going to perform? Totally. When and in also, doubt. We're no. just like, nah. Like, <laughs> yeah. nah. And sometimes you want to push the limits. You want to be entertaining. Yeah, totally. And you want right. to create discourse on your page. And there's yeah. this pressure. Yeah. But, you know, this, I, I looked, I saw, Natalie saw Katie's inverted nipple TikTok. And she's like, she showed it to me. And I was at first kind of like, okay, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, just, I, I, I read the comments. I was curious what the response would be. Mm -hmm. The initial response seemed to be rather Very positive. Supportive. A lot of it found the inverted nipple community. I, yeah, yeah. Like, it inverted, resonated with the people. Inverted nipple community. Where my inverted nippies at? <laughs> like, found, yeah, yeah. Found no, it. Definitely. It's just like, no, yeah, okay, yeah. great. Definitely. And that is great. I, I personally think it almost feels like it's giving it more weight than it needs to be given. Because to me, it's just like, yeah, everybody's bodies are different. Great, but maybe, right, but I'm gonna, maybe I'm, I'm wrong. Gonna, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. Um, yeah, it's 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 take it this way. I've had I've had a block. The quickest way someone could get blocked on my channel is if they weaponize my relationship with my fiance. She's because I'm very guarded, or any of my family members. It's like I will talk about things as I see fit. You may comment however you want, but I will block someone who who will bring in my relationship to make their point. Don't weaponize my relationship. Don't weaponize my vulnerabilities. Right? Shout out to Franny. Don't 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 weaponize these things. Um, as part of as part of your defense, and part of what we see with fan bases, we say fan bases. Fan means fanatical, right? People that really like what you do, or they, you know, w with with someone like I always use myself as an example because I I'm, I'm I I comment on this community, but I have no idea what they go through. I have no idea what they go through. I just know what I go through, and there isn't like an ownership thing that happens. I a lot of people spend a lot of time investing in me and watching my channel grow, and I'm glad that they are a part of that. And a small sub segment of that will be like, don't be doing this. Don't be doing that. And there becomes a control aspect. And that's something you kind of have to worry about. But I also wouldn't tell Katie, don't post about your inverted nipple. Don't post about these personal things. You just have to know that by being authentic to who you are, it's not going to be for everybody. If you're a pro-choice person and you want to fight for the rights for people to have X, Y, and Z, you be authentic to that. The hack, when you talk about hack, and I'm not, I'm not saying Nick is this way, but he, he thinks about his business and he might, he might have something he doesn't want to like comment on. He's like, oh, I don't feel like commenting on gun, guns rights. You know what I mean? He might have something that's not that's not important to him but a hack is somebody who doesn't share what's important to them because they don't want to ruffle feathers in stand-up com comedy a hack is someone who's trying to please the whole audience what do you guys want to hear versus what i want to say now this might be a video that doesn't perform that well but it's but it's what i want to talk about and that to an extent can be more important than whatever the salacious thing may be and of course we balance and i do a little bit about dale's toes i do a little bit by the way if you didn't watch my earlier video i've got a bandwagon here so if you guys know i've got the wheelhouse and um, this was created by Tara. So let's just hit the wheelhouse before we get out of here where, you know, people are saying, you know, I got a comment from someone saying, hey, stick in your wheelhouse. And, uh, and then other people said, Dave's wheelhouse is whatever he wants it to be. Katie Thurston, your wheelhouse is whatever you want it to be. And good on you and John for sort of navigating when you let people into the comment section, because that's sort of what the dilemma is. Not that you can't share what you want to share, but uh, trying to... Um, Maintain that connection to the people that believe and the people that trust and the people that respect and droning, drowning out the voices of those that cr criticize, that tear down. Uh, and because, and before I spin the wheelhouse, because that is what it is about. Like, like Nick has said, there's a cycle and I, and I've been really thinking a lot about this. We like to find someone. Katie Thurston was a fan favorite. She brought a dildo onto the show. Oh my gosh, we love Katie fan favorite. And then she became popular and then people didn't like her for the exact reason they first liked her in, in that she's a little messy. That she's not afraid to say what she means, even if it's going to be a mistake. Even if she regrets 12 days of mess, she still took a shot, right? As a comic, you don't always hit home runs, but you got to take shots. You got to try. And she tried. And it, you know, it didn't resonate. Maybe it wasn't the right time. Maybe the breakup was too soon. Who knows what the case may be? But then she gets teared down. And then she makes a post saying, you know, I had to go on antidepressants. And people go, oh my gosh, geez, boy, yeah. She's just like us. So it's like, it's still a control thing from the audience. Collectively, the audience wants to control who they build up. 
They want to control who they tear down. And then if they think you've paid the price uh, in remorse, then they'll bring you back. I know firsthand accounts of villains that have been bawling their eyes uh, you know, out on their own time that you, that audience don't get to see because they just think these people are bulletproof because they've got some sort of influence or entitlement because they've got a little bit of a following. following. Yeah, our, 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 our genetics, our, our DNA, it doesn't know the difference if we're verified on Instagram or not. I'm not. But it's like we're all trying our best. And, and, um, and, and it's the first time in human history where we've had to deal with public shaming to this extent. That it, and people go, well, it's not cancel culture. It's consequences. And people should have consequences. But at what point is the healthy amount of shaming someone if they have a disagreement or if they did something wrong? And at what point are we trying to control others by moral grandstanding when uh, we think our belief system is better than theirs? These are the questions we ask. All right, here we go. Let's go to this uh, here. What do we got? Dave's wheelhouse. What do we got here? Oh, soapbox. Wait, I think I just got on the soapbox. I got on my soapbox and I told you it's not to stop to morally grandstand. Go out there and call your senators if you want things to change, but don't, don't, you know, don't waste your time. It's futile contacting these influencers. They're just like you and us. Let's get them off the soapbox. All right, let's do one more. This is fun, right? By the way, Tara created this. Tara, can you put more, th- <laughs> can you put more things on this? Um, uh, leave a comment if there's any other uh, things you want in Dave's wheelhouse. This is fantastic. Here we go. Uh, here we go. This is the last. <laughs> the set. The audio. Oh, politics! Oh boy, Bernie Sanders was robbed. All right, folks. Let me. <laughs> oh, Terry, you're the best. You really uh, brought some joy to my life. I appreciate the wheelhouse. Thank you guys all so much. We'll see y'all later. Bye, buttheads. Go to patreoncom Neal if you want to be a part of uh, the live stream this afternoon. We'll talk to you later. Bye now.